Hey, John here. So a lot of uh, military live in my neighborhood and they see my site. And so they always come to me with their specific designs, which I think is really cool. Now this neighbor came to me and all he really wanted was his flag. Uh, it had been flown at all his previous commands. And then he wanted something that would have his family in a picture. So I thought I would combine the two. And then we grew on to that one and came up with, let's display your swords. So we want a flag, a picture of the family and some swords. So I thought I'd throw a little bit more space in there so we could add a few of his medals and ribbons. So this is the concept that I came up with. And so while I was thinking about this, I thought, hey, Murbal is the best wood to build a shadow box with. I built it with the Texas shadow box and it turned out fantastic. So I looked all over the internet and I found some on eBay and I bought some raw pieces of Murbal. So that's what we're gonna start with for this project and we'll hope that we can end with his vision and his, uh, the vision that he has for his final product. All right, so let's get cutting. To make this video a little different, I am going to show you a quick down and dirty on how I took a few pieces of raw Murbal and prepped them for this box. I took a 4x4 piece to the bandsaw and resawed it into a few pieces. I then chose the pieces to use based on their grain. I have an old piece of Murbal with multiple styles of stain so I can get a feel for what I want this project to look like in my head. Notice the pieces still have live edges so I will cut them off first. The edge was pretty straight so I decided to run it through without attaching a guide board. I took off no more than one blade width and then simply turned it over and moved the fence a fraction to take off the other side as well. Okay, when I resawed these on the bandsaw, I knew I would be planing and sanding these, so I cut them a little wider than the standard three quarters. I found two scrap pieces from previous projects, so I thought, why let them go to waste? So now my goal was to match those pieces so I could use them all. So not only would I match the width, but I would also match the height. And this also gave me a comparison guide. So I took the first scrap piece and lined it up on the table saw, sliding the fence loosely to it. Don't apply too much pressure here. All pieces will be cut to this height. A key point here to remember is that your cut pieces need to accommodate your folded flag, so keep that in mind. I took a measurement so I knew it would be tight, but that's exactly what I wanted. Using my guide piece again to set the blade, I run it through the planer. Then I continue with all the rest of the cut pieces at the same time. After that, I raise the blade and place the boards on their sides to ensure that they all have the same height. At this point, all my pieces should be smooth when held together. Do a quick check, feeling for any raises in elevation to see if you need to run them through the planer a few more times. So in my head, yes, I'm making this up as I go along, I wanted everything to be balanced with this box. So to start, I want to get a good feel for the stars. I want a perfect pyramid of stars with the fold. So taking some scrap plexiglass, I lay it over the stars and balance them from top to bottom. I then make some marks on the plexiglass to cut. Plexiglass is easy to cut. You can use a jigsaw, a bandsaw, or a table saw. I have never used a miter saw, but I'm pretty sure you could get away with that too. Now get your flag ready for folding and insert your plexiglass behind the stars you want aligned. Fold your flag and check to see how much width you have to manage with. This flag folded fairly thin so I will be well within my cut pieces. Okay let's start getting some dimensions for this box. We know we want a picture and a few extra shadows so the base of the flag which is the top of the box will be our starting piece. I decided on two feet, so I just add one more inch to play it safe, and in case my corners don't come out square and I need to recut, I'll have an, a little bit of wiggle room. Take your mark to the miter saw and cut two identical pieces, one for the top and the other for the bottom. Then take them to the framing jig. You can use your miter saw here, but I already have my table saw out, and my framing jig has never failed me. We now have the top and the bottom of the box, so let's work on the two arches that will house the flag. You can cut three pieces to house your flag, but I don't want the extra piece between the bottom of the flag and the top of the box to make this look more professional. So the top of the box will double as the base of the flag as well. This also makes cutting easy and all you need now are two 45 degree angled pieces for the pyramid. 
While you're at the table saw, measure down a quarter of an inch and cut your glass groove. This process is the same in all my videos, so let's go quick. Cut your back plate relief. I was too lazy to swap out the dado blades, so I just made multiple passes at a quarter of an inch. Glue your arch together and place a couple of brads in it to secure it. Double check that your glass track is aligned before you move on. Here I use some plexiglass to do that. While I was waiting for the glue to set, I cut the side pieces. I just eyeballed it, but I don't think it was any more than 12 inches. Now the image is no longer just in my head. This project is really starting to take form now. Go back and add your glass groove to the base of the box. Center your arch on the top piece of the box and make your marks. We are now going to add the glass groove to the top of the piece. What I did here is took a Dremel bit and found one that was the same width as my saw blade. I did this by putting it in the pyramid grooves. Then with a straight board, I clamped it to the table of my drill press, aligned it with the bit and drilled out between my marks, staying a quarter inch shy of each line that I had previously drawn. I took a corner of glass and placed it in the triangle. Nice and tight, I pushed it up in there hard. Then I placed a piece of painter's tape a quarter of an inch below the bottom of the ends. This will give me enough glass to extend down into the line that I just dremeled out. Now on the other side of the same board, we need to make the flag's back plate relief. Remember, like the glass groove, this one cannot extend all the way across the board. So I raise a router bit to the exact height and width and then route out again between the lines staying a quarter of an inch short of the previous drawn lines. Then you can quickly cut out the back plate for the ensign. Here I am using tempered hardboard. So real quick, let's put three sides of the main box together. Most important while doing this is to use a small scrap piece of glass or plexiglass so your glass grooves are aligned. As long as the glass grooves are aligned, you will have no issues when it comes time to putting in the glass. It's easier to sand the top or the bottom of the box if there is a little deviation, but if your glass groove is not aligned, things can get pretty complicated. Leave the bottom piece of the box unattached and just place it into position so you can get a good measurement for the back plate. If you kept your pieces square while the glue was drying, cutting the back plate should be a breeze. Now we can cut the glass for the bottom rectangle. I dip my blade in a little bit of paint thinner and strike the glass. Then I slide the glass over to the edge and reclamp it back to the table and then snap the glass off. If your glass grooves are aligned, you should have no problem sliding it in your box. Okay, while I work on this next part, I remove all the glass from the project. Yes, if you're a subscriber, you know my luck with glass, so I'm not going to chance it here. The sheath and the saber holders should be easy. In my head, I just plan on cutting a few holes in some extended pieces. So first, I just need to know how long these pieces will need to extend. So I take the sheath and the sword and lay them out and see what looks good. I quickly cut two matching pieces at the miter saw. Mark their height in relation to the bottom of the box. Now I don't want to lose all of their width here. If you cut it too thin like the rest of the box, the cuff of the saber will not allow the box to lay flush on the wall. So from the base piece, I will make the extensions grow outward gradually. This in my head will give the cuff of the saber room between it and the wall. Remember, the back needs to remain flush with the back of the box. Now just cut out some holes where you think the sheath and the saber will look best. I decided to cut the sheath holder from the back to ensure it has room to pass by the saber's cuff. I'll put the saber's holes in the front of the holders. Okay, I know you guys just love it when I make mistakes because I'm not perfect. So check this one out. When cutting the slots for the saber, I did this while it was lying flush on the workbench. This first slot would place the face of the saber at about 140 degrees. This is okay when looking at the box when it's on the bench because it's facing upward towards me. But picture it on the wall and the face of the sword would practically be facing at my feet. So, fail. So I quickly cut the slots a little bit deeper and bent them back in the correct direction. And this remedied the situation. With the saber holders complete, 
it was time to attach them to the bottom of the box. I simply glued them on and placed a few staples in the bottom of each. Okay, you're now at the point you can sand. Like all my projects, I sand in three stages. 60, 120, and then a fine 240. Just remember, the more time you spend sanding, the better your finished product will look. The owner of this box wanted to have everyone that attended his retirement ceremony to sign the backup. So when he asked me if this was possible, I said no problem. So I spray painted the back of the back plate with a gloss white enamel. That way he could take a Sharpie and have his friends sign it. While the paint was drying, I stained the rest of the box. Just like always, I just use paper towels and rub it on. Merbal looks great with any color stain, so it's pretty hard to screw this up. We are now going to attach the triangle to the top of the box. Take your glass and insert it into the triangle. Make sure it's really up in, in there tight. Then place some glue on each end and with a paper towel wipe up any glue mistakes. Once you have it in position, just clamp and hold into position until it dries. If you want to put some staples in the bottom, up through the bottom of the box into the triangle, just make sure you're not going to hit the glass so you don't shatter it. Take the flag that you folded earlier and put it in the triangle. Then attach the ensign's back plate. Tempered hardboard drills easy, so I did not bother drilling any pilot holes here. So in the process of cleaning up at the end of the day, I managed to drop the unattached piece of the box and knock loose one of the saber holders. Yeah, crap. So I pulled off the other one and I decided to cut some reliefs in the board to give it more stability. I made some marks on the face and just ran the piece across the table saw a few times until I had a really tight fit for each saber holder. I think in the long run this made for a stronger box and if the saber is removed a lot for show and tell, the holders will be able to take the wear and tear. At this point I will go about building the display board. No changes here, so if you want to see this in detail you can check out one of my other shadow box videos. After the saber holders dried, I did a quick re-sand and stain to make it look like the originals. At this point your box is all done, but remember that the owner of this box wanted to put a picture in the box. So taking this one step further, I decided to make the picture frame out of the same wood so there would be no contrast between the frame and the shadow box. I took a thin piece and ran it through the table saw to give it a lip for the picture to rest in. Then cut the corners with the framing jig and glued them together. Yes, a simple picture frame stained in the same stain as the box. Okay, so what I did that I thought was neat was I drilled some shallow holes in the frame the same size as the head as the brads. Then with super glue, I put a dab of glue in each hole and then with pliers I pushed the brads into the hole. Now the frame could be placed anywhere in the box and I thought this was pretty cool. Well, I thought it was cool until I got the picture that was going to be used. And since I like perfection, I decided to cut down the frame to fit the picture. So that's exactly what I did. It all fell into place and screw ups aside, I think the box turned out great. So tell me what you think. I would love to hear your comments below. As always, thanks for watching and hit that subscribe button.